Welcome to Git Credentials Binding Plugin Mentoring Session. It's the 28th of May. Uh, let's look at the topics that I think we've got to consider today. So here's what I had. Uh, username, password, binding prototype on Windows, private key on Linux and Windows, and private key with passphrase. And it sounds like Arshit, that, that you may have started already on private key on Linux and Windows. Would that be a, a, an okay order or which order would you like to discuss? Mm, yeah, this is fine. And are there other topics you'd like to add onto the list? Mm, no, for now, uh, first I'm working on the private key and the passphrase, then I will, I will set up the environment properly so Windows and uh, other platforms like CentOS and the Git versions also I have to test on various Git versions like 1.8. So then I will continue further. But for now, my focus is the private key with passphrase. Great. And, and do you want to share what you've, what you've observed so far? You mentioned Bouncy Castle and maybe you could share that and I can take some notes here and then we can have a, a brief discussion. Mm, yeah, so, uh, so in the Bouncy, yeah, so I was look like going around, going and seeing, uh, one second, I, let me open the Java docs. You say you were you were looking at the bouncy castle Java doc. Mm, yeah. Okay. No, I, I was opening it right now. Ah, got it. <clears throat> so first of all, like I generated my private. I mean, like uh, the key, the encryption key using uh, Open SSH. Uh, so the command was like SSH key gen, uh, and it was generated in a. I mean, a, form, a new format, which was not supported by Bouncy Castle API. So I had to convert that for, uh, convert that key to PEM format. Then it was supported by Bouncy Castle API. Uh, and uh, after that, there was a, there was a decode and in decode method with, which, pro, which use the string, which use the the key private key in string format and the uh, passphrase to decode the private key protected by the passphrase and generate a new PEM encodable object. So with that, I can write the, uh, take the private key from that, that object and write it in a binary format and provide it to the command, git ssh command. So, so the passphrase thing was not an issue, but to the a uh, new format thing was an issue for me that uh, openSSH pro generates key now. So did I capture that correctly? The open SSH format that's currently generated, and I assume this is, could you share with me which, which open SSH version you're running? Is it 8.4, 8.3? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think that it's SSH minus V. So on my Ubuntu, it's 7.6. Minus V, okay. No, it's not working. Right. Mm. 
and it's 8.4 on Debian, a pre-release of Debian 11 of Bullseye. So a, a wide range of values there possible. Um, are you running CentOS? Which, which operating system are you running? Uh, Ubuntu. And 18 or 20? 20.04. Oh, okay, good. Well, so let's just, we, I can look it up already then. So Docker run. Uh, let's see, Ubuntu. And you said you're running 20.1? 20 mm, 04. 20, okay. Oh, all right. So. I got it's 8.2 P1. Okay, good. So 8.2. All right. So a, a reasonably modern one. You're not running. You're not running CentOS seven, for instance, with with many very old programs. Great. Okay. So the private key. Go ahead. No, I was just saying like I used to work on CentOS before, but the functionality provided by that was very limited. So I had to shift from CentOS to Ubuntu. Mm, okay. Yeah, and and we we ultimately do have to care about CentOS. So we'll mm -hmm. we'll what you've discovered for this one maybe maybe also a different thing with CentOS CentOS sevens. OS support. So again, it's, let's see if I can try that. Oh, apparently not there either. Yeah, so CentOS 7 goes all the way back to OpenSSH 7.4. So yeah, so so certainly we've got a wide range of SSH versions that need to need to be need to be aware that they are available. I mean, if uh, the user generate the uh, the encrypted key uh, using the latest open SSH format, then what should we do then? Like it will not support the bounds because of API. Um, I thought, well, is there, a, is there a way in Bouncy Castle to do the conversion to PEM format? I was looking for that, but I didn't found it. Ah, okay, but, all right. Uh, but I have to go, I have to see a little more about that. I think if I can figure out, I will tell you on the chat. Great. Okay. All right. So this feels like it's a very good thing for you to be investigating during during this period of community bonding. Glad that you've started it. That's really great. And when you did the conversion to PEM format, does OpenSSH accept PEM format? 
Mm, yeah. Open SSH, I mean, like, uh, in what context open is how? I mean, if I have done the conversion, uh, the uh, the headers change or make mean the format changes. The openness, I don't understand it. How mean? How will open SSH will accept it? Well, so so if you if you convert if you convert the if if the the private key we receive from the user is a an open SSH. Let's say it's open SSH 8.2 in a format not supported by Bouncing Castle. Then we have to find a way to convert it to PEM to separate it out to, to decrypt the, the, the passphrase protected private key, right? Yeah. And once we've done that, then we need to create a new private key which is decrypted and pass that. And that new private key needs to be accept needs to be acceptable to open SSH because it'll do the work. It will it will be the one that when command line git connects through SSH protocol, it actually delegates to SSH to do the to do the communication. Hmm. Uh, I mean I have not checked with I have not checked with the open SSH effect. I mean, I have converted the key using the SSH keys and command. So it was accepting for back then, but <clears throat> I don't know if I have, I'm converting the key using bouncy castle API. If it supports, then it will support the open SSH format or not. Mm, okay, the, the so more format or not. needs more investigation then. Good, okay. Yeah. So the, the sequence the sequence might be um, open SSH 8.2 passphrase protected private key uh, converted to PEM format. Mm -hmm. And PEM format decrypted and that's PIM format passphrase protected private key. Mm. Right? Did I understand that correctly? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. It's, it's good. And then PIM format passphrase protected private key decrypted to a and I was assuming it would be PEM format, but so to a question mark, um, private key without passphrase protection. Hmm. Yeah. Is that, have I understood correctly the sequence? And yeah. then the private key without passphrase protection passed to open SSH for use in the in the git credentials binding mm. so does that make sense mm, yeah this is okay still now i have reached okay so you did this step and you did this step and, and the last one as well. Oh, you did. Okay, great. All right. And then yeah. uh, open SSH communicates to remote Git server. Uh, let's call it this authenticates to remote Git server with using private key without passphrase protection. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. I haven't checked if we had it and still just you and me. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna ask some questions. I think that Justin warned me he might not be available today.
so so Justin, I knew already had something for today. And I'm not sure on on Marky. So we'll we'll just continue. Let's keep going and and identify how things are going. Okay. Mm, yeah. Anything else that you wanted to review with regard to private key with passphrase on Linux and Windows? Mm, no. Okay. I think we have covered all till now. I have what apps to research. I think we have covered it. Great. Congratulations. That well, and, and that's you're doing exactly the right thing in this phase to explore and understand and be sure we we identify any bumps that are going likely to happen during implementation. So I assume that you've probably not tried anything on Windows yet. This is, I think I'll, maybe we should put that note. This is just, this is Linux for right now. And, and that seems like you're investigating the most, the, what I'd call the highest risk part of the entire thing. So this is a great thing for you to be investigating and, and exploring. Everything else can wait. I mean, this is Linux Debian. Uh, I have not tested on CentOS. Right, right, and and that's for me. That's just fine. I think testing on one Linux is already very good, and testing then on a Windows will find a different set of likely a different set of problems and a different set of things that we need to explore. Mm, yeah. Okay. So that are there other things that you and I should discuss today to to get is there anything else that you want to to discuss or any questions you want to raise? Um, there was one thing, but it is not in the priority list, but uh, like uh, I am, so uh, the implementation that of the bindings is that uh, I'm carrying out is like, I'm not, uh, oh, I mean, they, these bindings are only, uh, uh, one second, one second, I mean, Okay, so the Git environment variables such as uh, Git ask pass or Git SSH are only used to perform the operations. Like in the previous bindings of credential binding, we have seen like there were uh, user name binding and the pass password binding and the passphrase binding, but I am not performing that. So only the Git environment variable binding I'm performing. And, and I think that is exactly correct because we don't want the user to, so let's, let me say it this way. The binding implementations are intentionally only using Git specific bind environment variables that avoids confusing the user with require by requiring them to choose correct names for those variables. Right, because if we don't use, if we don't use git, I think it's git ask pass or is it git ssh ask pass? I, I don't remember if we don't use the correct name. No, it is git uh, ask pass and git uh, ssh, then ssh ask pass. So it's list actually. Ssh ask pass, okay. Um, yeah, and uh, git ssh and git ssh command. Then the user, okay, then the, if we don't use the correct, then the, the git commands won't work, right? They expect exactly those environment variables and, and the files associated with them, right? Because in addition to defining the environment variables, you're also defining placing files on the disk that contain the specific content that we need, the, 
username prompt, the password prompt, etc. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for me, that the fact that you're using only get specific environment variables is exactly correct. We we aren't trying to give them a general purpose. This is how you pass pass SSH configuration things to SSH. That's not what this this binding does. It's just to focus on command line git. Uh, yeah, but I was concerned like in the freestyle job, there is an option parametric expression. So in that, uh, <clears throat> since I have not provided any environment variables for that purpose, so I'm not sure it will work. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that, that's a good question and um, may need to check with Justin in our next session on the parameterized expression because I don't I don't know how that how that would interact with a, mm -hmm. a binding that provides no user modifiable environment variables right we we're not giving them a choice of what name they should use it has to be these names will control them Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that, that feels like a good question. Either you could explore it if if you get if time allows or it's it's worth just asking and seeing if Justin already knows the answer. Okay. Very good. Any, any other questions related to your, to binding implementations or other? Mm, no, um, till now, this is how much I have researched. Oh, this is great, oh, this is really. <clears throat> Okay, so let's let me go back over some previous notes just to be sure. And we 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 got the answer to the what about JGit question. You were okay with that. Okay, and you're exploring the private key now. And oh, 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 that's one. I had an action item actually. Okay. So let me make some notes here. Mark to to check with. Justin, um, Rishab, and Marky to see if they should be designated as Git client plugin maintainers. At least one of them. So that they have merge permission. The idea is, so I talked with Marky about it and he was he was willing and he's got experience maintaining other Git related plugins. Uh, I haven't checked with, um, with other plugin maintainers. And have you found anything that surprised you where you said, oh, we shouldn't put this implementation in the Git client? It's still okay uh, no. to put it in the Git client. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm, yeah. I think it should be in there because the functionality Git client provide with the, like the low level working is good for the, for the bindings. Great, okay, all right. Also, I was thinking like, uh, like the fun that, like the bouncy console functionality. If we are able to crack it, then that could also be used in the Git client plugin authentication. Yes, and like, and and that matches with what um, Jesse Glick had suggested. He said, "Hey, Mark, you're doing an awful lot of heroic efforts." in the Git client plugin to use passphrase protected private keys. And you could just 
crack the break, decrypt the passphrase protected into a non-protected and use it and avoid a whole lot of problems. And so you're, you're absolutely right. That would be a bonus if we found a way to do that. That's certainly not one of the goals of the project, but that would be a real bonus because it would make certain pieces of code in the Git client plugin much, much simpler. Um, yeah. Good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions that come to mind? Mm, no. Okay. Well, so while we're here, then I'm just going to take a minute and I'm actually going to go ahead and send the mail so that I've asked all the right people. Okay, so compose a message to see to Bobby Sando. Okay, to uh, Olivier Lamy. Uh, who are the others? Oh, Ramon. Well, Ramon Leon. Okay, apparently I don't have all their email addresses. I'll have to look them up separately. I'll ask the question afterwards. I, you don't need to wait for me while we're on the phone or on this call. Okay. Any, any other topics? Well, there was one, like I was exploring the, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I was exploring the, um, the Git client scripts for the SSH uh, SSH uh, authentication and there was uh, I was a bit confused in uh, display there was a keyword like this in the script display and zero zero what was that I was not sure about that that's a that's a very that's a fun one to to share with you so good let, let me put it this way why is there a display equals zero colon zero or it's FM it may have been equals colon zero, right? Why is there, why is there a dis environment variable? And and the history there is that command line SSH with passphrase in some Linux variants will open a controlling, open the controlling terminal. Um, let's see, how is it? Unless display equals is set. So, so what happens then is it does a blocking read waiting for human input. And so that setting of the display equals zero colon zero is a workaround for passphrase protected. It's part of the mess that we will remove if you can find a way to decrypt passphrase protected private keys in Java code. Uh, so uh, I did that. I mean, so in the late in midnight, I was testing <clears throat> the uh, the work I have done. So it was uh, not going, it was like uh, not going uh, further. It was like only working around like 
it was like frozen <clears throat> i mean it could be a problem the display was i like i don't know <laughs> so let me put that again so i was working uh, on the ss binding and i figured out that it will work i put the environment variable i said the environment variable git ssh and at i be, uh, started the build now process and it would not go further it just froze on that so oh. i was confused like it may, might be due to this it it could be yes because because what happens if well it it depends if you were using an ssh private key with a passphrase then it may be attempting to open the terminal and if you were running your build from a terminal window it's actually got a controlling terminal then and then it it really can do a blocking read and it will wait for human input and usually the way to test that is if it seems to pop freeze if it seems to pause and you're running a command line program like maven press the enter key and uh, that may answer the passphrase prompt now it won't be a valid passphrase but it will answer the passphrase prompt and you'll get some noise from the the process that says oh no you need to enter it again so okay. at least that's a now that's even that's not a guarantee because terminals are sometimes complicated in how they connect how they connect to the keyboard and and disconnect so but but if it blocks if it pauses during a build during an operation uh that may indicate exactly this now there is there is a command on some linux systems not available on bsd or mac os if i remember right uh called set sid and what that does is it it causes the the next program to or the program let's call it this way it's program argument to be detached from any terminal and if you if you were to look up the uh this system call exists in BSD and in Linux and others uh this is a system call that used to or a library call that used to disconnect standard in and standard out and standard error and do those kind of things so in in this case i hope you don't have to use it because there is code in the git client plugin that knows how to do this s set ssid set sid thing but it's intentionally disabled because it feels non portable right if it only works on linux and not on any of the bsds that's that hints to me it's probably not the best choice of things to do Let's see the git client plugin source code for references to set sid if you want and again this is to be avoided so i would hope you don't have to learn anything about it hmm. so good that you're exploring display equals yeah that you you've seen that as well um have you seen any other surprises like that where we should discuss further i mean uh, also one thing like uh, do we have to use git ssh command environment git environment variable or it will work with the git ssh environment variable as well um very good question okay or can we limit it to git ssh and i think if i remember correctly git ssh command 
is the easier syntax, is the simpler syntax, has simpler syntax, but is only available with CLI get 2.3 and later. So not available by default on CentOS uh, 7. Let me do a quick check to see about CentOS 8. Oh, you silly thing. Okay, so just one second while I do one other check. Yes. Okay, so CentOS 8 has a plenty new enough Git version. So we could conceivably use Git SSH command everywhere but CentOS 7. Okay. Or could check the version of command line git. Uh, the, the problem with that checking the version of command line git is it requires a call to command line git. And I'm not sure if you want to do that in the command in the credential binding. Right now, you, you aren't doing any calls to external programs before entering the binding, right? There's no no need for you to, to call separate programs. You just initialize environment variables and files. Uh, actually, I did that. I did that. Uh, there is a method is at least version in the Git client plugin. So I'm using that to check if the version is 2.3 or not. Ah, okay. All right. So already using is a version at least. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, so then my preference is that we would use git ssh command as first choice if, if we've got a new enough command line git version to do it. Uh, now, if you find that, hey, there's not a real, a real benefit to using git ssh command instead of git ssh, that's something you could, you could educate us on. I had understood it was simpler syntax, but because of the complexity of CentOS 7, I didn't implement anything to support the simpler syntax. Hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm, no, that's all. So let me make a list. So the environment variables, just to be sure that I've got it um, being used and files being used, right? So we've got git ssh command and um, a private key file. Um, that is passed to get us as in the environment variable, right? And this is, it does not, if I remember right, have a, or it even has a facility to do the, to do the passphrase, right? I don't like remember the that. Git SSH command is oh, the benefit. The benefit of this is that it uses the shell script. Uh, I mean, it runs in the shell, but the Git SSH, the, it does not execute in the shell. It only uses a script to uh, that will perform in the shell. 
Ah, okay. So, and is run in a shell. Okay, Directly whereas directly the Git SSH it. is not. Yeah. Is a shell script that is invoked by CLI Git. Okay, great, excellent. So less convenient because you've got to add one more file. Um, yeah. Okay. And requires the shell script file and the private key file. Yeah. Okay. And then there was git um, ask pass. And this is, is a mm. shell script invoked by CLI git uh, for username password authentication. Mm, yeah. Okay, great. As, and it, so it's an environment variable that points to a shell script, yeah. And in VBAR, that points to a shell script. Yeah, there we go. That in re references a private key file Good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Mm, yeah. Any other topics that you wanted to be sure we note? Let's see, we're scheduled for our next session. Our next session is next Wednesday, your time. Is that correct? Uh, it is on, yeah. Second next June. when? Okay, great. So let's put that in the notes here. Meeting 21-6-02-0730. IST. Okay. Great. And I assume we'll want to talk about that private key with passphrase still. And we probably want to carry these forward so that we make sure we discuss them. Great. And that that will be the the that no, that won't be my last session because I'm I'm one week later that I go into surgery. So we'll still have several meetings after that. Okay. Arshit, anything else? Um no. All right. Thank you very much. I will upload the I've got the recordings of all of our sessions up to this point. I should be able to upload them later tonight and or tomorrow so that they'll be available in the playlist. Uh, on the YouTube channel? Yes.